Oh, hey. You have startled me. What are you even doing out here, anyway? Well, come on in and have a seat, brother. So what have I been up to over the last few months? Well, Contraband Police. It's a game about human emotions, and that requires a certain level of finesse. You know, Akaristan is a very beautiful country, but it's plagued by a very, very serious problem. The immigrants. And as a good patriot, I just, I just couldn't let that go. But we are getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. First, let me get you some food and some drink. You're probably weary from your travels. Piotr, uh, bring us some food and some drinks. Uh, and bring the vodka as well. No, no, the good one, the good one, yeah. Let's start from the beginning. And as usual, it's gonna get a little dark. Just like every other great story, this one begins with a call from the government. Something about a missing sergeant that me and my comrade over here, we have to go investigate, driving to the local sawmill. Luckily, I actually managed to grab a gun before leaving because as it turns out, this guy is dealing with the rebel faction, which is currently at war with our government. Maybe sending a... <laughs> A guy with a pistol against AK-47s wasn't the best idea. So our comrade didn't make it, but uh, hey, at least we completed our training. So now we're actually able to start our first day of our job, which is basically papers, please, but, you know, with cars and shit. And to determine who can enter our country, we have this uh, board of regulations here with, like, commodity embargo and cargo list, and if any of these checks fail, then we have to turn them around. We also have this list of smugglers, like... The details about some of their documents or their vehicle, which we have to look out for. And uh, to do this, we have a certain tool set, such as knives, axes, you know, just your uh, <laughs> standard issued government equipment. And if we do a good enough job, we obviously get a little bit of a compensation, you know, we're not really doing this for free. And uh, obviously, if we don't do a good job, we uh, lose the money, so we have to make sure we don't, you know, commit any crimes. <laughs> Might even get some fan mail from uh, disgruntled citizens detailing how much they uh, dislike us. I could be wrong, but I think... I think something doesn't add up here. And uh, we can buy a bunch of upgrades, such as buildings or personnel or new vehicles and such, because... Uh... <laughs> We're kind of living in the meth shack right now. By day two, I realized it might take a while to save up a little bit of money as the... <laughs> As I cut up this guy's car as he's helplessly stood watch on the sidelines. <laughs> that costs 20 bucks per, uh, per damage, so uh, yeah, it might take a while for us. But then he thought he could leave, and uh, I wasn't finished plucking the wings off this butterfly. Luckily, we have Constable Maximov here to help us to clean up the mess. Now, I understand, to an untrained eye, this fine gentleman right here might seem like an upstanding citizen, you know, just starting to pass for our country. But to a seasoned veteran such as myself, that was just another day in the office, because I could smell debauchery on this guy from a mile away. So I decided to arrest this guy so we could later sell him to a labor camp for some cash. As I continued to gut his car, we got fucking ambushed by a bunch of rebels. And all I had was my trusty pistol. But as it turns out, shooting people, or I mean rebels, and selling smugglers to a labor camp is actually a profitable business. And that gave me an idea. So my 200 IQ move right here was, what if I start arresting every single person? Wait, what? This, this guy was a criminal? I, I mean, of course he was a criminal. So it turns out this guy was smuggling quite a lot of weapons that we can uh, later sell to somebody else. Because let's be honest, I'm probably not the most cost efficient employee of the month. The best part about arresting criminals is that nobody really cares about them. So later that night, we get another call from the government about Gavrilov, the guy who was dealing with the rebels. And this time we need to tell him to see where he's actually hiding. So I tracked him down all the way into the woods, and apparently he has like a remote shack where he's hiding. And I found him inside with his hands on a table, but I could have sweared he was reaching for a gun. <laughs> anyway, we gotta listen to this guy yap for like 30 years, and then the game gives us a choice. We can either side with the rebels or the government. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not here to make friends. So we got attacked by the rebels again, and I got a nice little promotion. So I decided to buy myself a better weapon and start running around with a pistol all the time. And buy myself a better house because I'm kind of tired of sleeping on a on a piss-soaked bench. We even have a bed this time and a table and, you know, a wardrobe and a clock. It's not just Heisenberg's hideout anymore. <laughs> 
Anyway, the next day we got a directive from the country, basically detailing that we have unnecessary professions in the country, such as, you know, journalists or artists or teachers. The real scumbag type, you know? And these guys, let me tell you, they'll try anything to get into our country, even try to bribe me one time. So, you know, did a natural thing and I just arrested them. And you know, I'm, I'm with the government on this one because how are you gonna write an article about our country when you, when you can't even update your documents? Like, the picture doesn't even match. Look how bad this is. They're not even trying anymore. Like, I swear to God, I was one bad day away from just taking them all out to the woods and then just lighting them up. But, you know, I... <laughs> I got a reputation to keep, so I can't really do that. So the next day, the government decides to host Olympic Games in our country, which means we're not to allow any vehicles with more than three body defects into our country. So any damages we have to report, and you know, we have certain like damage controls and cargo lists still that we to keep track of, and the new vehicle registration regulations on the documents, as well as keep an eye out for the smugglers. Yeah, what is this, sir? Hmm? What's that? Oh, you got some money for me, huh? Very soon, thanks to my job well done, we got another promotion, which meant we can actually even earn more money. So the next day, we got another call about a murder that happened in a local pub not far from here, and we had to go investigate. I knew I'd have to keep a low profile for this investigation, so uh, that's what I did. Not drawing any attention to myself, I uh, made it to the inn. It was a beautiful day. <laughs> it always is. Then we got a quick briefing by our sergeant over here. And we had to investigate all the suspects that were present during the time of the murder. Then I went out back to see the victim, just, uh, baking in the sun with multiple stab wounds. No murder weapon around, so I used my forensic light to search for clues. <laughs> kitchen knife. Bingo. We had a hardcore criminal on our hands here, fellas. A real nutcase, a maniac, one might say. This case might be more difficult than anticipated. Or so I thought. Turns out that... <laughs> This fucking idiot just wrote a written confession and just left it there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I was very happy with that outcome. After that, it was uh, back to business. You know, the usual. There was this one guy, an athlete, trying to get for the border for the Olympic Games that we were hosting. But he was driving a real piece of work, I'll tell you that. I could not, in good conscience, like a respectable officer of the law, allow him to a country like that. Then, there was this hippie. I just knew he was hiding something, but I... Unfortunately, I just couldn't prove it. He was clean as a whistle, so I took matters into my own hands. The athlete we denied entry to yesterday was pretty important for the Olympic Games. <laughs> I slept like a baby that night. Uh, later, I received an anonymous tip about some contraband in a local graveyard, so I decided to investigate. Well, well, what have we here? Turns out it was an ambush though, and after getting down what I'm pretty sure were criminals, I uh, loaded up my van and decided to sell it to the local police office. So things were going pretty well, a little too well. Now all drivers must present a valid vaccination card for Novid 78 or uh, I'm gonna have to turn them around. So needless to say, these hillbillies <laughs> never stood a chance. Sure, maybe it's not a crime, but hey, Papa needs a new house and a new promotion, am I right? At this point, I was living life. Got an even better bed, I even got a desk fan for those warm, cozy summer nights. Now, speaking of warm and cozy, we got a call about somebody screaming from a nearby hotel. You know, I was inclined to investigate. Not because I care, it's just, you know, professional curiosity. Upon arrival, my suspicions were confirmed. I could see rebel graffiti all over that wall. Oh, <laughs> not to mention the screams. Yeah, so anyway, uh, I started blasting. After gunning down what seemed to be endless amount of thugs, I rescued some guy that was tied to the chair and helped him escape from the country. My decision wasn't, you know, entirely financially motivated, but hey, 1200 bucks is 1200 bucks. You already know I bought another house. Next day there was, uh, there was this guy that just kind of stuck to my memory. You know, he was telling about his sister and how she's seriously ill and he needs to see her. And you know, I'm not a monster, but I just bought a new house and I have some <laughs> financial obligations to keep, so you know, I, I had to do what I had to do. Pretty soon I think I started gaining a little bit of a reputation, you know, because some people, uh, some people try to tempt fate, let's just say. And, uh, you know, I was glad, I was happy to oblige. And by two weeks in, I decided to finally upgrade our prison cell so we can fit, you know, more potential, potential future free labor. There seems to be a conflict brewing in the south. And we're gonna get a lot of refugees soon, probably. Let me tell you, I was seizing so many drugs at this point that I didn't even need to arrest anyone. But, you know, I still did it, though, because, you know, I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I was good at it. 
Huh? We have a SKP? What? Guys, relax. He's not even he's not even running. Oh. Oh my god, he's not even moving anymore. Are you all aiming with your <laughs> penis? What the fuck? Turns out these fuckers were getting smart. I I genuinely thought this was a normal looking pig. And <laughs> imagine my surprise when I found it's full of cash. Anyway, the prison was already filled up to the brim, so I decided to do a same day delivery to our local uh, gulag nearby. You know, for some, for a little bit of money, eight hundred bucks is no chump change, as well as uh, dropping off the drugs that I've confiscated from the local drug dealers. You know the worst part about this is I was actually considering letting some of the smugglers through just so uh, they build up some confidence, you know, so I could see some more drugs because uh, this is a major payday. So yeah, so next basically we got another call from the government about some guy that was kidnapped and beaten allegedly by some criminals. And anyway, we were sent to investigate to the local sawmill. So I made my way there to speak with some people who maybe might have been around when this happened, you know. So after questioning and searching up the car for some clues, I realized he was being kept in the vicinity of the local quarry. And after I went to investigate, I <laughs> realized I accidentally shut down the smugglers, right? I mean, officially it was not an accident, but you know. <laughs> Found some more clues and I went to the local uh, gulag shop, so just to question a few inmates. And the guy didn't really want to talk, but you know, I, I have my ways to... Uh, to motivate people to speak, so to say. And then we realized he was being kept in a local graveyard again, so... The same one we uh, shot up recently, <laughs> a few days ago. So I decided to go back and check it out for myself, and uh, stumble upon a dungeon filled with uh, dead bodies and the guy that was nearly beaten to death. I think he was stabbed as well, you know. I tried to help him out as best as I could, and... And I think uh, the gang was pretty upset about that, because they literally attacked the same sawmill we were... We were at the, just this morning, so, you know, I drove over there to reinforce the fellas and then just, you know, help them out a little bit. Uh, sir, are you aware that there was a shoot <laughs> shootout here? Were you here this whole time? <laughs> anyway, we were at war at this point and suddenly there's gonna be an influx of refugees, even more so than before, you know, with their sob stories and trying to get into our country. I was the only thing that was standing between us and chaos, you know, I couldn't just let our country go to waste. So I just took care of business, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I was all about shoot first and ask questions later, you know, I, I implemented my own policy for the border patrol. You know, these people that were coming in, they had absolutely nothing, just their car and, and whatever they had in their pockets, you know. That disgusted me and I had to teach them a lesson. Let me tell you, I was filling up those prison cells real fast. <laughs> I even stopped asking for documents at this point, you know, I, I didn't care anymore. You're under arrest, sir, for for being a fucking idiot. <laughs> anyway, at this point, we got one last call from the government, and uh, we were to report to the labor cab. There was a secret operation that we needed to conduct with our informant from earlier that I uh, interrogated. Obviously, before leaving, I made sure to take care of business and whatnot. After reporting to the labor camp, we discussed that I'm going to be sitting in the back, uh, helping them escort this prisoner, as we were going to be chased by a bunch of uh, angry Russians with ladders, and... But then eventually we got stopped by a blockade. Uh, our comrades got shot in the face, obviously, because why the hell not, and... I saw the Bloodfist rebels and decided to take matters into my own hands. Unfortunately, the game... <laughs> Doesn't like that, so. But after a quick talk, the, the guy decided to do it himself. Anyway, eventually we got another call. The parliament got attacked, so we had to hunt down the rebel leader. So I went back to where it all began. Actually, that's a lie. I have no idea where it all began, but... <laughs> I went back to the inn where we saw the murder before, so... Oh, my God. There's so many. What the fuck? Okay. Okay, it's clear. Anyway, we got a little showdown with the rebel leader at the end, and, uh, you know, we, we had a little conversation. Well, I mean, he talked, I just listened while I was struck to <laughs> not bleed to death, I guess, from my head wound, but I stabbed him in the neck, and uh, eventually it all ended in a happy, you know, the happy ending. The party and the government won, everybody else were locked up, and uh, we lived happily ever after.